The area is 10 years old. It's an amazing achievement and it's been an honor to lead the area for the past eight years. In this time, I've witnessed many changes. Membership of the area has grown. The members have collaborated and delivered lots of useful tools, infographics and content to help overcome barriers to adoption. The area committees continue to focus on the challenges such as security, safety, human factors and creating a global set of requirements and deliver an excellent and applied research for the members. There is definitely a growing interest regarding the benefits of deploying AR solutions within enterprises. As the area continues to grow, I look forward to working with all parts of the ecosystem to solve some of the key deployment challenges, help companies define and deliver benefits and ROI, and drive the thought leadership and the understanding of AR use cases. Well, you know, it started around a table. Might have been a meal, but it was certainly a table and uh, there were end user customer segment members, there were people who were providers of technologies, and there were also some uh, non-commercial entities. And we had been speaking about the future of AR, but in the context of interoperability and integration. That's what I had been uh, gathering these people together for several years. And Paul said, you know, Christine, it's great that you're focusing on interoperability, but we have much bigger problems. And why don't we uh, investigate the possibility of creating a new organization that addresses uh, our, our common problems and uh, that's what we did. It was towards the end of the year, and we had a little bit of some people had some, you know, discretionary funds had some uh, opportunity to to take this on, and we jumped for it. It was a question of the right right time at the right place and the right people around the table. Well, from our perspective, when Christine first approached me about it, um, you know, we were really interested, and I think the mission is um, to, to solve the common challenges that enterprises see when they're trying to implement uh, augmented reality into their business. For us, it's manufacturing. We saw interoperability was obviously one of those, but we saw that a little further out. Nearer term, we needed help on like what were the safety risks, uh, what is the ROI, what are the, some of the common technical challenges that we and others were having preventing us from implementing AR. And we really saw the area as a mechanism to work on those challenges uh, with other folks, other enterprises, um, in ways that we could make progress together. So I think that that's the mission. The steering committee plays a very important role on two levels. On the operation side, it provides governance and budget oversight to ensure that area has a good operational plan, it executes the plan, and meets its member obligations. We do that by conducting regular reviews and approving its annual budgets. But more importantly, the committee provides strategic guidance to the consortium. It looks at the broader ecosystem and the bigger technology trends and gives feedback and advice on our member needs and the technology roadmaps and the long-term growth opportunities. So uh, I think the, the biggest role of the area steering committee is to support the strategic initiatives of the organization to help drive growth and overall just to make sure that everything is successful uh, that is going on within the organization. The key deliverables for the upcoming year are to make industrial augmented reality uh, uh, accessible and easy to consume for both our members and for the broader community, and to promote new use cases that drive operational efficiency across many industries. There was a high level of risk concerning the uncertainty around data security with enterprise augmented reality. Uh, our project was to evaluate the realm of augmented reality security, specifically related to wearables and to identify ways to mitigate those risks. The final research report delivered results that could help enterprise business and technical teams who are 
trying to implement solutions to evaluate uh, their situation versus the risks, also to evaluate vendor solutions uh, against each other for device vendors uh, who might be interested in hardening their solutions for the enterprise. It gave them a structured framework in order to do so. And then for application developers, it gave them a way to um, evaluate and architect their solutions to navigate the many risks and vulnerabilities that these new systems represent. Some of the highest value use cases for AR are deploying it in the highly secure um, corporate and other organizational environments. But there's a lot of um, open questions about how to do that safely and securely in a way that protects the, the data and the other content that's on that headset. Um, so we were really trying to address how can one successfully use wearable AR in particular in those types of environments. The research we did with Aria was focused on answering some of those questions, in particular, how to use multi-user based devices in secure environments. And a lot of the benefits were not just giving an overview of the situation and some of the problems that need to be tackled, but actually providing functional code and frameworks um, in which to design applications that allow, in particular, um, application level authentication that's secure for environments that can then be directly taken and deployed uh, by area members. Yeah, so to paraphrase our committee charter, the area security committee focuses on current and anticipated security risks associated with the use of AR enabled devices in enterprise uh, environments. So as these technologies, use cases and applications become more prevalent, security will be increasingly a vital component. So we're investigating and developing some great content aimed towards helping enterprise better understand their security posture, known challenges and opportunities both today and tomorrow to enable the more secure use of augmented reality across a wide swath of use cases. And we're very open to learning more about needs, gaps, and other concerns industry is facing. Uh, the Area Safety Playbook is a collection of, of different recommendations uh, that we have compiled um, across industry to enable um, safety managers and folks who would be using AR, you know, XR type applications in industrial type setting or office setting. So it gives them a, a quick kind of a handy reference to look at, uh, you know, material that will help them to understand what are some of the, the pitfalls and things that they need to be aware of um, that could potentially uh, cause problems for them in their XR implementations. Um, really, anybody that is a manager for XR, um, practitioners, all that kind of stuff, we, we try to make it very easy to use and, and very kind of referential. So we uh, you know, put uh, examples in there of actual uh, use cases from industry and things like that, hopefully enabling folks to see themselves in the material. But uh, yeah, but really anybody who would use XR. The purpose of the Human Factors Committee is to bring together practitioners who work in industry and academia to share best practices about the usability and user experience of augmented reality systems. Well, one activity we have going on is to create a deliverable for area members on how best to apply human-centered design thinking for AR projects. So this includes human factors activities and things to consider during the the time when we're learning more about our users and designing and prototyping and then testing and evaluation and then to implementation. Well, the use of augmented reality in industrial and commercial applications, including the industrial metaverse, will change the way we work and live. It's an exciting time to be involved. AREA is well positioned to help our members overcome barriers to deployment of augmented reality as well as extended reality applications and we look forward to driving the AR ecosystem.